Well, the Gamma 370 Pro flew much like the upgrade kit on mm -hmm. the original Gamma. Yep. Um, not a lot of surprises there. We expected it to fly that way. Yep. So let's get into the uh, review with model characteristics. Build is advertised. We gave it a five out of five. Very straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, it's nothing it's, to it's it. It's what you'd expect out of today's RTFs, what you'd expect out of it's just minor assembly. Yep. And you're up and going. That's pretty so. much it. And assembly. the directions are fantastic. They walk yeah. you all the way through it. They In do. fact, they go above and beyond. They give you a lot of tips and tricks and stuff that help. Well, they really are geared towards someone stepping yep. into a four channel for the first time or even a three channel. Yep. Finish 3.5 out of 5. Um, you know, our biggest attraction out of this whole thing has been the stickers. And, you know, we've talked about it many times on other reviews, but these yep. stickers in particular, we've, we, when you hear them flapping in the wind when you're flying, it's yeah. it, you know you've got a problem with them. Now, Vertical stabilizer rudder, that sticker keeps coming off on yep. us. The horizontal stabilizer, they come loose in the side of the fuselage, yeah. they keep coming loose, which it's not that big a deal. You just stick them down before yeah. your flight and they'll hold through the flight. But it goes to, into finish. You yep, know. It, it definitely it does. It ties yep. into it. So. But the foam is extremely smooth. It's a really it nice molded uh, you know uh, injection job on the uh, on the EPO foam. Yep. So and it's a nice looking plane. Yep. It's got nice it lines to it. Power 4.5 out of 5. The brushless setup on this is, is yeah. more than enough what you would ever want to do with this airframe. Yep. It's just that simple. I mean, yeah, you've got really good climb out authority. Yep. Um, and we'll get to that runtime. It has, it's just a really good mating. The, it with is. the 3S power system. I, for my flying style and yours as well, the 2S isn't real thrilling, but if you're newer to four channels, you're going to want to take advantage of that. It'll it's tone a, it down a little bit. It's such a quick change out to just throw. I mean, you're literally just using a different battery pack, a smaller 2S battery pack. Yeah. And we have, uh, you know, a couple here uh, that we used, our 3S and our 2S. And it was as simple as popping the rubber spinner off, throwing the 2S prop on, flying it with the 2S battery, and then switching out to the 3S. Yeah. So it's a quick change, but um, you'll find yourself flying 3S probably once you oh, get definitely. your chops and you're comfortable with the airframe. Yep. Ground handling, four out of five. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it behaves really well. If you look at it, it's a very short coupled plane, um, but it, be, it, it has really good tendencies, good behavior yeah. when you come into, uh, uh, into your landings. In fact, it doesn't want to tip stall too easy on no. you. It has a really good stall break. Um, so you can two, three, four shot it. If you're coming yeah. in a little bit too fast or wrong angle, you can get some more power and it'll give you it's it's forgiving enough to give you a chance to level out and come in for that second yeah. or third attempt well the, the ailerons are almost full length of the wing too which helps yep. a lot because it, it gives you if you need that quick responsiveness yep. you know to straighten up for that touchdown you've got it you're going to get it yeah landing gear is a little bouncy on it it we is talked about that so yep. and when it comes to um uh taking off on grass um, we took off on very short, tight nap grass at our flying field, and you, you have to play. You have to keep the elevator, keep the elevator pulled back all the way, you know, hard up elevator, and blip the throttle a couple times to get it moving and kind of unstuck from the grass. And then you can do consistent, you know, takeoffs and in yeah. and, and, and grass, but you're not going to take off in, in tall grass at no. all. Your yard, you know, in typical no. park grass, you're going to have a little bit of right over. Yep. But you can easily pop the landing gear off and hand launch it as well. You yep. know, it behaves uh, uh, for hand launching it very nicely. So. Yep. All right, that leads us to durability, five out of five. It's an EPO. It has a breakaway, say breakaway wing. It has rubber bands holding the wing on, so it's going to handle the, you know, the heavy tip, uh, um, the wing tip impacts yep. a lot better. And it's just small and compact. It yeah. literally fits in the, you know, passenger seat of a vehicle so easily. Yep. And you got a rubber spinner on the front, so um, it's just, it makes for a very, very durable sure. you know, combination. There's no detail on it to break nope, off either. not so. at all. Nope. Okay, pilot experience, flight is advertised, four out of five. We've already alluded to that several times or, you know, just in this last few minutes. But the flight envelope is large on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take off. Um, it's, it's great for learning your takeoffs. Uh, it's good for learning your landings also, mm -hmm. really. Um, but everything in between, it, it gives you a little bit of room. Like you said, with the 2S pack versus the 3S um, you know, you can get out there if you've got experience and, and have fun with it, or you can, yep. you know, keep it docile. Yeah, good. Like, like I said, good, a good flight envelope, and really that's the key on something like this. If you're going to be flying in a lot of different spaces or in smaller spaces, you don't want it to have bad characteristics as you slow it down. And at the same time, when you get up there and you start horsing it, you're running 3S and you want to do some aerobatics, you don't want it to get real pitchy. No. You know, and, and sometimes they do based on it's, it all comes down to the airfoil design, the incident on the main wing, yep. and a lot of characteristics in the tailplanes. It's balanced out nicely. It is. It flies well. It flies well at higher speeds. It flies well at low speeds. You don't get a whole lot of a lot of sag um, no. or slip uh, through your turns, no. which would make it you know uh, uh, uncomfortable. So you maintain good rudder authority to flatten out those turns. 
Um, so it, it has good, good, really good handling all around. I mean, it's it's a very trainer friendly platform, just like the predecessor Gamma 370. Yeah. With the dihedral three channel setup, um, throwing the sport wing on there, I think complements the airframe well, and it and it maintains so. its its positive uh, characteristics all the way through. Definitely. Flight time, we gave it five out of five. Mm -hmm. It's really not an issue. Flight time is no, no, not at all. What batteries we did use, which I think we used a thirteen twenty, yep, in a thirteen hundred or thirteen fifty on a two S. Yeah, thirteen fifty on a two S, and we use a thirteen twenty on a three S. Yeah, and in either configuration, what you'll find, you'll know your skills are advancing when you start burning through that two S pack a little exactly. faster because you're just hammering the throttle all the time. Yeah. Now it's time to move into the three S and get even more flight time out yeah. of it. So. Yep. Field size, you know, this is a park. You are, you're going to want to park. Yeah. To fly this. This in. is a this is the quintessential park flyer. Yep, it's perfect it really size is. for that. Portability, four point five out of five. You know the the wings come off easy with the rubber bands. You could just lay the wing beside it, and store yep. your car as small as it is. You can stick it on its nose in the back seat. Yep. It's you know. Yeah, you've got a couple airline leads coming through, but there's enough you know there's enough lead there to be able to pull the wing off and turn it sideways. Yep. And uh, the fact that it has landing gear on it, the fuselage is going to maintain its orientation too, which. Yep. You know, in some aircraft, it you know it's not so easy to pop that main wing off because no. you've got retractable landing gear. You've got you know issues. And this where prop's pretty flexible too, so that wouldn't very really be flexible. susceptible to uh, no. much damage. Skill lever, skill skill lever, skill lever. Were you found that lever yet? It's a medium sized yeah, lever. Right. Sometimes I a lot forget of leverage. mine. Uh, skill level, we've got it at beginner, intermediate. Beginner if you're just stepping into four channel. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say beginner if you've never flown a plane because no. that's what the, you would want to go to the uh, Gamma 370, the original setup. But this being the pro, it is four channel, so you're going to want some your, uh, some stick time mm -hmm. to understand it better. Uh, intermediate, if you want to put it through the paces that to, to be able to pull do everything that this plane's capable of, you would need intermediate right. skills. If you buy it because of its aerobatic capabilities, you're going to want to have beginner, intermediate to intermediate skills exactly. to be able to handle it. And I think the important thing that we can pretty much wrap it all up on too is we, we, re, we get a lot of feedback over the years and we see a lot of discussions about foam planes, foam trainers versus build-up balsa trainers. Mm -hmm. Wingspan, you know, is a smaller 37-inch uh, wingspan a good trainer or not? And I think the important, and this is really how they place the product. It's bigger than a micro. It's going to handle winds better. Um, but it's not a large no. plane to be able to, to try to manage and, and learn on. It's, it's really meant for calmer flying days. Sure. Um, now, with skills, with, with intermediate skills, and if you, you're comfortable flying in wind, I would have no problem. In fact, the first time I flew this, it was gusting. Or it, was, it was blowing about a good eight miles an hour. Yeah. And I knew it was going to be too windy to really relax and fly mm -hmm. it and, and just kind of loft it around and see what its characteristics are like. But it cuts through it just fine. 3S yeah. setup, plenty of power, and you just weather vein it. You yeah. know, you just get it in the wind and do your thing, make your downwind turns, keep yeah. your speed up, and then come back around and, and uh, hit up wind and do your aerobatics and you know, just yeah. kind of keep that circuit well, going. When you get some flight, quite a few flights under your belt and you start getting to where you're flying the plane that's not yep. flying you, um, you know, you'll find that sometimes a little wind can be fun. Oh yeah, you can play Absolutely. with it. Even though it's not designed to handle it, you learn how to make the plane yep. function through the wind. And what's it going to do? It's going to jump up and yep. down on you. And for beginners, that scares the yep. crap out of you because you want to correct it immediately. Oh yeah. If you're up a little ways, just relax. Just let, let the it wind it. toss it a little bit, and then make corrections yep. to keep it going in the general direction you want it to. And and you start learning how to fly in the wind. Yeah. Which this is this is probably a great example of a type yeah. of plane that you'd want to go out and learn how to fly in the wind with. Yeah. You don't want to take your expensive build-up ball, so you don't want to take your you know, you're, you're more involved. And, hey, and again, we proved with the uh, Stick 75s that mm -hmm. uh, you can fly in the wind on something. That yeah, <laughs> with, you can fly in something that's meant to fly in dead calm. That you can fly ridiculous. in the wind, but yeah. it worked. It we were fun. actually very, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was. So this is a great way for somebody to learn how to fly in wind. Instead yeah. of being frustrated with the fact that, oh, it just gets tossed about, that's yeah. what it's going to do. Every it plane is, gets tossed about sure to some degree. It's about the pilot being able to take advantage of yep. it, understand their downwind turns, understand their upwind turns. Um, understand, you know, how to keep it aloft, keep the air speed up to where That's you it. maintain control. Instead of um, fighting the wind, what you're doing is just reacting to it. You're just, if it's pushing you one way, then you react the opposite way and yeah. keep it as in, uh, keep it where you want it going. Yep. And uh, landings are always a little tricky in the wind, especially when you get a crosswind landing. Uh, to understand, I'm still learning a lot of times mm -hmm. on a crosswind landing. But it's possible. It's very possible to do. Yep. Yeah, it's going to weather vane really hard on you. Yeah, learn you how to have the crab. Yeah, you do have that rudder there to, to, yep. to, to bring it down uh, nice and straight right yep. before you touch down. But 
it's a it's a fun i still think of it as a trainer even though it's a sport plane yeah you know carrying through the gamma 370s characteristics to me it's a very learnable plane yeah in terms of of uh four channel if you're moving from three channel to four channel my gosh it's a 99 dollar 99 cent plane yeah you're gonna get it's durable it's yep. you can fly it over and over and over again you're gonna get long flight times exactly so to me you know it's it's you just have to understand the placement of the aircraft as opposed to saying well, this one's better because it handles wind better. This one's worse. It's the, it's all relative based on the aircraft size and yep. the pilot skill. So, That's exactly it. And I can tell you right now, I flew it in eight gusting to 10 mile an hour winds, and it didn't crash. I didn't tip it over. I didn't yep. do anything. I flew it over and over yep. again. So, But I took those skills into the to the aircraft yeah. and the expectations. So uh, good experience overall. Yeah, again, Aries once again has created an yep. airframe that, that is, uh, is very sm slick in the air and uh, has a, a good wide flight envelope, and that's, that's what you want. Yep. That's the key. So, that's we're going to see the full review. Go to our website at 2bfly.com. For our mobile users, you can go to rcflightsource.com, download our mobile app, and take our content with you on the go. I'm Kurt with Two Brothers Hobby. And I'm Rob. Thanks for watching.